I don't know what it is. Deuteronomy chapter number 8. Deuteronomy chapter number 8. I would, uh, if you're able and good for just a moment, stand with us. We're going to read a few verses in chapter 8, verses 10 through 14. Familiar passage of Scripture. My, let, me, let me say before I start tonight, thank you for the invitation to preach. Uh, I don't know, but I appreciate Brother Sonny asking me to preach tonight. Never reached the place to where I feel like that uh, I deserve that privilege, but God's been really good. Let us uh, have the opportunity down through the years. Most of you probably don't know it, but I preached in this church before you ever showed up. Uh, Brother Sonny and I were discussing the other night. He said the old the old house used to sit out front. I remembered it. I thought it sat in the back. But, uh, that was the outhouse. <laughs> maybe that's where they put me at, Josh. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, uh, I preached a revival here many, many years ago in a little house. Inside walls were tore out on the inside and holding chair set in the middle. And after the revival, just a few weeks, I participated with my pastor to organize a little place called Bethel Missionary Baptist Church. And uh, it was a blessing, still a blessing to come. I think I was thinking as I sat there, over the years we've helped start, I think, 11 churches. And uh, God's been good, nine of them still going. I've uh, ordained 11 young men out of our church to pastor churches over the years, and I think maybe uh, nine of them are still trying. Matter of fact, uh, you know, they call medical doctors, they say they're practicing doctors. We're just practicing preaching. Eventually, we're going to make it to where we'll get our degree and be able to handle it. But anyway... Deuteronomy, chapter number 8, beginning with verse number 11. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God, and not keeping his commandments, and his judgments, and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built goodly houses, and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Lord, I pray tonight that you might help us. Pray, Holy Spirit, that you might let our mind be clear, our words be understandable. May he that's capable of using this word of God tonight use it to his glory. We'll be careful to thank you and praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, I feel like Paul, when Paul spoke in the book of Romans, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it's the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to the faith, for the judge shall live by faith. And it's good not to be ashamed. We don't have to be ashamed. I, I tell you, the world is doing its best, and I don't want to get, I don't want to get detoured tonight. Uh, I, I've always enjoyed preaching to our congregation because a lot of them have been there for 50 years and I, I, they know what I'm going to say sometimes better than I know how to say it. <laughs> sometimes when you're preaching to new people that you haven't preached to or don't uh, get a C regular, you don't really know where they're at from a standpoint of what you're trying to say and you don't know which way to go. So you pray for me tonight, I'll try to do my best to serve the Lord. I remember a song that uh, the family used to sing. And I, I wish I could sing it, but since I can't sing it, I'll give you a line out of it. Uh, I've had a birth I can't remember. One I can't remember. 81 years ago, I came into this world 60 years ago, 
I was made a new creature in Christ Jesus. Don't know anything at all about the first birth, but I can tell you right now, the second birth made a change. Made a change, is making a change, and will continue to make a change till it all changes, amen? But uh, uh, I want to do a little, I like talking and conversation with congregations, so I want to ask you a simple question. How well do you remember? How well do you remember? You say, preacher, I remember everything. Well, could I ask you, when we're thinking about looking back and thinking back, this coming Wednesday, not the Wednesday that's this week, but a week from Wednesday, what happened? Where we at? 9-11. You know what happened at 9-11 when all the things happened in America? The American people as a whole made a, made a comment, we will not forget. Isn't it sad that we have forgotten? And I'm talking about our country as a whole. Uh, we put uh, the same people that wanted to destroy us in politics, we put them in office. We've let them make decisions on how our country runs from day to day and week to week. We've forgotten. God knew we were forgetful people. Matter of fact, the Bible, 56 times these two words are found together in the Bible, in your King James Bible. Forget not. That'll be my message tonight, just a real simple message. And I'm going to change it a little bit, not to change the scripture, but just so I can use it uh, in my language a little better. Don't forget. Don't forget. God said to Moses when he gave him the book of Deuteronomy to write, he said, beware lest thou forget. He said, things are going to change. You know the two times people are most likely to forget? Help me out a little bit. I'll preach faster if you'll help me a little. The two times that men forget the most. When things go bad, people will forget. And when things go good, everybody forgets. I mean, we're, we're in a, a generation of people, and uh, my generation is an older generation. We're in a generation of people that don't remember what happened uh, 20 years ago, five years ago. What happened last year? I mean, when I look at what's happening today, I just don't understand how people can forget so quickly. Deuteronomy 9 and 7, God says, remember and forget not. Uh, Bible says in Psalms 103 and 2, forget not all his benefits. Yes. I mean, how often do we look at yes. what's wrong yes. and the difficulty and how bad things are? Yes. I mean, I can probably say and honestly say that most of us here have looked back on this week that's just passed. And we'll think more about the things that have gone wrong than we will the things that have gone right. Yes. And, and God said, there's coming a time uh, that you need to remember his commandments, you need to remember his judgments, his statutes, and he said, I command thee this day, beware that thou forget not. And then he says, lest when thou art eaten and art full. Man, when things going good, plenty on the table, and, you know, and you can go to the store and buy a whole container full for 20 bucks. I, my wife and I was talking not long ago, we first came to Louisville 62 years ago. And uh, we lived in a little apartment over in Highland Park section. A little store a few blocks down. We go down there to shop. Uh, and uh, we, we, you could buy a whole basket full of groceries for 20 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I worked at a service station. Now, a service station is what you get the gas at. Now, it's two different things. Yeah. Yeah. Serv a service station, when I worked at the service station, when somebody came up, you put their fuel in the car, you check the oil in the, in the car, you, uh, mm, you check the tires on the car, you washed the windshield on the car, and you said thank you when they paid you. Wow, has things changed? Uh, remember and forget not, forget not all his benefits. My son, forget not my law, God says uh, in Hebrew. I mean, God says, do not forget me. I'll not forget you. 
God, God, God didn't give the rainbow so God could remember not to destroy the earth again. God gave the rainbow to Noah simply because he wanted Noah and his generations to follow to know that God hadn't forgot. Now, you may forget, but God won't. I, I believe it's possible, and you, we're not going to uh, discuss doctrine tonight, but I believe it's possible for a person to forget even their uh, relationship with God. But I want to tell you this right now, God never forgets his relationship with you. It's not possible that God forget. He's not a forgetful God. I mean, uh, good times, bad times, when you're full. Remember, remember when your bank account was paying all the bills, some left over? It's hard to, it's hard to remember that right now. Most of the time right now, there's not too many people that are paying the bills let alone having anything left over. But every now and then we need to remember how good God is. God, God's a, a good God, a great God. Matter of fact, uh, in the book of Psalms, Psalms 103, uh, the Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Because God knew we were forgetful. God has spent so much of this book, and by the way, this book's important, spent so much of this book to help us remember how good God really is. I mean, in the Old Testament, God dealt with man, and he dealt with man through basically five avenues. Number one was the tabernacle or the temple. Number two uh, was the offerings. Number three uh, had to do with uh, uh, the uh, priesthood, the priest. Uh, and the fifth one was basically the, the law of, mm, yeah, I get them in a feast. The feast of the Bible have to do with prophecy of time. And, and God said, because you're so easy to forget, every so often, I'm going to require something of you. These feasts were designed for the purpose of reminding God's people of where they came from. Feast of Passover had to do with the fact of reminding people when they got redeemed yeah, yeah, yeah. from the land and the hand of the Egyptians. Yes, yes. I, I mean, do you remember when you got saved? Yes. Remember where you were at when you got saved? Yes. Remember the condition you were in yes. when you got saved? Yes. I mean, really, every now and then, God needs to take us back and show us yes. where He brought us from yes. so we'll remember how good God is yes. in His mercy and grace. Yes. Uh, our problem today is we like to center on just the negative thing rather than the positive. Matter of fact, mm, the Feast of Passover was, you remember, that's when God said to Moses, tell the people, slay the lamb, take the blood, put it on the doorpost. Every, everything that God's dealt with man is through the blood. That's a whole different sermon. But, but I, I'll tell you right now, uh, whenever at the Feast of Passover... Uh, the blood was placed, placed on the doorpost in the little, little house. Yeah. By the way, the people of the house couldn't stay outside. They had to come in. Yeah. And to come in, they had to get under the blood. Yeah. And i tell you right now, to get in, you're going to have to come under the blood. I mean, the blood, the blood's still there. It's still available. God said, don't. He said to the people of Israel, don't forget you were slaves. Don't forget where you came from. I mean, he said every year on the 14th of Nisan, which is the first month on the Jewish calendar, on the 14th day of the first month of the year, that's the Hebrew uh, religious year, he said on that day uh, the lamb will be slain in the tabernacle in the temple. The lamb will be slain and you'll be reminded that you got out under the blood. Man. Mm. Now... <laughs> The feast, by the way, there, there's seven of them. Seven, like the number three, is a special number in the Bible. And somebody said, Preacher, I, I don't see any place where the, this particular verse is of greater importance than that particular verse. I'm not saying any particular verse is of greater importance. But I want to, I really believe, I really believe that when the <coughs> King James translators put it together, and I believe when it was put in order so you could follow me when I read it a while ago, on Deuteronomy 8, I believe that even that is in an order that's yeah. proper with God. 
But anyway, there's three parts to Passover. Passover, the, uh, the Feast of Bread, is part of Passover, and of course in the Feast of First Fruits. By the way, when I say that, sometime when you've got time, you Bible students, go, go to your New Testament, and you'll find out that in every one of these feasts, Jesus Christ is the picture of it all. Matter of fact, he's the first fruits in 1 Corinthians. Uh, he's the bread in uh, John's Gospel chapter number 6. And he is the Passover lamb in John's Gospel chapter number 19. He is all in all. Of course, when, you, when you're looking at time-wise, and I said the, the feasts have to do with time, those first three parts have done taking place. Christ has come, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ is the bread of life, but the next feast God gives to them is the Feast of Pentecost. You know, and, and when I say this, I'm visiting, so whatever, whatever I get wrong tonight, don't blame the pastor, blame me, all right? Because I won't be here to put up with it. So don't blame him. But I, I, I don't I've had people say, well, preacher, what we need today is another Pentecost. You'll get another Pentecost when Christ dies again. It's just that simple. And there'll be, another, there'll be no more Pentecost until Christ dies again, and he's not going to do it. By the way, just in case you don't know, he will not. He died once and for all, forever, and it's forever settled in heaven. But, but we are living time-wise. We're living in the age of Pentecost. From the time that Christ died rose again, ascended back to heaven on, on the 50th day. Matter of fact, the word Pentecost means nothing more than 50. It's not some magical, scriptural, uh, doctrinal teaching. Pentecost means 50. 50 days after, the Holy Spirit came, just like Jesus said it would. I mean, it came, and we're living in the day of Pentecost. Well, isn't it good? How would you, how would you like to live under the law? How would you like to live under the Passover? Where's your lamb? You'd have to bring your lamb. But at the Pentecost, God sent his lamb. Not complicated. But, but mm, those are the first four parts of the feast. But there's three more. And those three haven't happened yet. And could I give you a real chronological view of them? One of them is the Feast of Trumpets. Amen. The next event, the next event on planet Earth is going to be the sound of the trumpet. Amen. He's coming, like it or not, he's coming. You can't keep him from it. The, uh, the government can't keep him out. And the truth of it is, whether you're ready for him or not, he will come. Trumpet will sound and we'll be gone. The Feast of Trumpets. Then, there, <laughs> then, then there's another one and it's called Atonement. Feast of Atonement. By the way, when, and again, I'm just visiting, when we are called away, when the trumpet sounds and God's children are called up to meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord, brother. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. Until we come to uh, when that happens, we're going to stand at the beam of seat of Christ to give an account for our Christian life. And by the way, that's where the Feast of Atonement comes in. That's what it's all about. It's the only feast of the seven that is not a shouting hallelujah feast. But anyway, there will be, <laughs> there will be a time when we'll give an account to God. Every man's going to give an account. Somebody's all preacher, I've done get. No, I want to tell you something. From the day you got saved until the day, you, until the day you're called home, the things you do that are wrong yeah. can't just be forgotten about. Yeah. We will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ yeah, to give an account. Yeah. I don't need yeah. to go. Right. I want to pre I want to just I just want to preach on don't forget. Preach it, brother. Don't forget. It, I mean, like it or not, how many folks go to church on Sunday thinking about all the good things God's done? All the yeah. blessings. Yes, I mean, forget not all his benefits. Yes, yes, sir. Oh, thank I, you, you remember when you got saved? Yes. My, I, I said, 
I was 21 years old. I was I'm drunk. I was ungodly. I'm glad my children never had to see me in the situation I was before I got saved. But I, I want to tell you, I want to tell you right now. I can't forget where I was at. Yeah. Because nobody could help me. But Jesus did. It wasn't an eloquent sermon. It wasn't a, a, the most popular preachers. It was just the Holy Spirit of God dealing with a sinner on his way to hell. Knowing that he needed help. By the way, he came that Sunday morning to help. And oh, how he helped. And I, I can't forget it. I don't want to forget it. Matter of fact, my wife and I, a little early tonight, we drove over uh, the road over there in Dow National Turnpike. Looked over there and saw Oak Grove Baptist Church. Reminded me yeah. of that Sunday morning yeah. when I was going down. He lifted me up. Oh, yeah. Reminded me that I couldn't help myself. How many times have you, oh, I'll quit. I'm sure none of you have ever done that before. I'll quit. I, 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 I won't do that anymore. I'll just quit. I'll change. But the fact is, there's no change until Jesus changes you. I don't know about you, but I know for sure. I know for sure that I don't want to forget. I don't want to forget. I would hate to think I had uh, my wife would probably remember this lady at the church I pastored before we started Maryville. Over the years, this Christian lady married. They had two children. I think it was two. But uh, things happened. Sin got in. Her and her husband got a divorce. She went mentally crazy. They put her in a psychiatric ward. They took the, I visited her. They took the electric shock, yeah. hooked it to her, gave her so many shock waves yeah. to make her forget everything. Make her forget about everything so she could try to live. And I visited with her and I was sitting over there talking to her one day and we, we were talking and she didn't remember her husband. Didn't remember her son. Didn't remember the church. We talked a little while. And I had prayer with her. And this is what she told me when I got ready to leave. She said, I do remember that I got saved. She said, preacher, that ain't possible. I'm not telling you what's possible. I'm just telling you what she said. I will tell you right now, there's a change that transpires within you. You don't quit because you can. You don't quit to do better so that God will accept you, but you quit because He changes your life. Puts within you a, a spirit that desires to follow God. Uh, to, to acknowledge the fact that God has been good who forgiveth all thy iniquity. Oh, Father, all. Bless the Lord. Yes. Oh, I'm glad he didn't just take part of them, aren't you? Amen. I remember the day that I trusted Christ and we all probably are a little different in how things happen, but I, I remember I was raised in a different type of doctrinal church. My mother attended the Church of God and most of the time when I was a little kid, that's where I went. Of course, they never told you about getting saved. They just told you about all this other stuff. Yeah. Well, God does heal. We'll get to that in a minute. But I remember, I tried to remember that morning. I knelt front pew right there where Joshua said, prayed, and I'd say, me and the Lord, I'd just say, Lord, uh, forgive me for this and this sin, 
<coughs> I tried to remember every sin that I ever committed. <coughs> but I tell you, I finally gave up. First of all, that's not what he's talking about. You need to repent that you're a sinner. Being a sinner and committing sins, you commit sins because you're a sinner. But you can commit sins even after you get saved. Don't want to get too far. But I remember saying, Lord, I can't do anything. I'll just trust you. And when I trust him, things change. I drove my wife and I drove home from Oak Grove that Sunday morning and a little 55 Chevy I always tell people I wish I still had it <coughs> but anyway I remember driving and she was sitting over here and we weren't talking but I was talking in here it seemed like the devil was talking in here <coughs> I'll tell you what he said this is the way I thought. This is the way I, I experienced it. He said, you'll never make it. You'll never hold out. Did you ever hear that? You can't hold out. You can't hold out. You can't hold on. I know I'm, I'm not. I'm telling you right now, if it was left up to us, we'd not make it. And I'll tell you what I told the devil. I didn't have enough sense to know didn't have enough sense. I, I still don't have much sense. But anyway, I see things a little different now, but I, re I remember what I told him. I said, I don't know whether I can make it or not, but I'll just leave it up to him. And I'll, tell you, I'll tell you the truth. He's done a good job for the past six years. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, healeth all Thy oh, yeah. Amen. Isn't it, isn't it good to know that the great physician is still the great physician? I, I'm thankful. I, I tell you, I'm thankful for good doctors, and I'm thankful for folks that that really practice medicine. I'm not against that at all. Uh, without it's me, and most of the time, I just don't want to go. I have to be careful. I'm not going to look at it when I say how it's like that. But <clears throat> last. Uh, Thursday, we were over at the cancer center. And the doctor came in. He got the <clears throat> results back on my wife. She'd been battling cancer for close to two years, taking the chemo and radiation and immune therapy. And we went in and sat down. He came in. Strange how I don't know why they don't pay me like that. But, you know, a guy can come in. Say hello and goodbye and something nice in between. Just walk out, bill you for a few hundred dollars. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, he came in. He he said everything was clear and everything was fine. You say, preacher, what are you saying? I I'm saying that doctors can do a whole lot, but God can do so much more. Amen. Amen. I had. Uh, Years ago, I had problems with my ankles, and we went to the doctor. He said, I need to do a, some examination, take some whatever it is, have it sent off and test, and he came back, and I had cancer in both my ankles. <clears throat> Between the time that he did the biopsy and the time he said, it's cancer, I did what everybody else and I about halfway went crazy. Just thinking, well, what if it is? Yeah. It probably is. It probably is. I prayed about it, prayed about it, and I prayed and asked God to help me not to be troubled with it. And I still, I haven't reached that place yet where I can say I've got it all together. Yeah. But I can tell you this. We went back for the time for him to give us the verdict. We went in, I sat down, he said, it is cancer. From that time on, I never had any problem with it. Amen. God took Amen. away all the sure. troubles about it. Amen. They did 
surgery. As far as I know, it's lasted for a good while, so I guess it'll, it'll last as long as I do. I had, uh, had heart problems. I've had heart problems all my life. I have a, my heart skips a beat every so often. I worked for the railroad. I was welding up on the side of a well call of a train car. I could feel my heart skip a beat. I had to either get down off the ladder, lay down and get my feet up higher than my head or I'd pass out. Badly. It's that simple. It got so bad that when I was preaching a lot of times, I couldn't stand up and preach like I am now. I'd have to sit out on the pew or sit down on, on the steps or somewhere to finish my sermon. It really got so bad that uh, I went to the doctor. They gave me all these tests and all the rest of it. When it, <clears throat> when it was over, of course, at that time, several years ago, I was young enough for a heart transplant. And uh, he said, well, he said, that's about the only thing we can do. He said, now, my heart beat, my heart, my heart beat slow. Last time I went to the doctor, he said, you got your heart's beating fast. I said, well, that's the first time I've ever been to the doctor they said that. But anyway, uh, he sent me to a specialist who sent me to another specialist. And they had scheduled me for my final hearing on Monday. <coughs> and Sunday night after church, I had talked to my kids about it. I invited them without their spouses to come to the house. And we sat in the basement and I told them what was going on. I said, look, don't intend to have any surgery. I don't intend to have anything done. Uh, God gave me this heart. Everybody has to decide for themselves. I wouldn't advise anybody to do what I've done. And I said, you know, I'll die with it and whatever. That was Sunday night, Monday morning, we went to the doctor, and this specialist, new specialist, he put me through all the tests and did all the things, and he came in, he said, uh, said, I don't know what all's going on, but he said, I don't find anything wrong. And, uh, we had a little conversation about some things. And he said, I, I tell you, he said, I don't advise you to do anything as far as anything different. You don't need medication. You don't need this or that or something else. He said, just keep on going on. And this, is, this is what he said. Now, I got a life out of this. You may not. I may offend you by what I'm going to say, but I kind of laughed about it. He said, if I was you, I'd go home and get me an envelope and put $10 in it and send it to What's his name on TV? <laughs> I knew Jimmy Swagger and none of the rest of them had anything to do with what's going on with him. What made me well. But I want to I believe God, I believe God's able. He said he heals all thy diseases. Amen. As a matter of fact, he heals a lot of them that we don't even know we got. Amen. And sometimes we we're so prone to Complain. Yes. Forget not. Yes. I mean, think about it. Remember. Remember where he brought you from. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Uh, I asked my buddy back there to sing a certain song for an invitation tonight. He said he didn't know it. But he said he didn't know that one, so I think that's going to be it when we, when we get ready. God has been so good, church. Amen. Amen. I gave up. I left Illinois Railroad in 1980. I was a carman for 10 years and worked with a lot of young boys, younger than me even then. I was old in 1980. <laughs> but when they found out that I was going to voluntarily just leave with no place to go. They were good, they, they had good intentions, but they'd come by and they'd say, Preacher, you're making a bad mistake to leave a good job like working for the railroad and just going out to a little church. 
really financially not in a situation to take care of you and your wife and five kids. And I mean, they did pretty much everything they could to discourage me. But I, I, I want to I wanna say this tonight. God has never, God has never let us down. Amen. All the years and all the times and all the heartaches. Amen. Everything that's ever happened in my life is because of his goodness. Amen. I couldn't forget him if I wanted to. I got a chance for, I don't know, anybody around here is ever familiar with the Elden Railroad. I worked at South Louisville Shops. Dealt in railroad for a little over 10 years. And God let me preach in the shops Amen. to the men I worked with for 10 years. Crazy. I mean, uh, I know that wouldn't happen today, but I want to tell you something. You'd get a lot more done down where you work at if you'd stand up for what Christ said. Yes. 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 You'll never be blessed of God. You you never be able to thank him for his goodness Amen. if you're unwilling to follow him. Yeah. I made some enemies, made some friends, yes, sir. but I've discovered something, Brother Sonny. All of my enemies can't harm me. Whatever he's done for me and will do for me and takes care of us. I mean, how can you thank him? How can you say thank you, Lord? Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. I mean, how can you how can you forget? Have you forgotten? Maybe I need to get back to my sermon for just a minute for a quiz. Have you forgotten? Remember when he healed you? Yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Really? Yeah. Have you forgotten about it? No. Mm-hmm. Where were you at? Where was you at when he touched you? <laughs> yeah. What was going on yeah. when he met you? What was happening in your life? I mean, had you been wealthy and healthy and everything in great shape, you'd have probably never stopped long enough. Yeah. To let him do anything for you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sometimes sometimes our <laughs> Trials turn out to be our greatest blessing. Yeah, yeah that's right. I've uh, I've always wanted to be an evangelist. I've pastored for fifty five plus years over at Maryville. A couple of years before I went there, and I never did want to be a pastor. And I know you're going to say, preacher, how in the world can you say that? It's a fact. My wife's sitting right there. You can ask her. <laughs> I always I always wanted to be an evangelist. I always wanted to just travel around over the country and tell people about Jesus. See people get saved, make everybody in church mad, and leave it with a pastor. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> oh, come on, man. You, you look better when you smile. But, truth, but truthfully, folks, I mean, only God knows what tomorrow holds. Yeah, that's right. 